If you've created macros in earlier versions of Access, you're familiar with the traditional macro builder grid. Conditional statements were entered in the condition column, macro actions were chosen from a drop-down list in the action column, and arguments for each action were entered in the action arguments pane. Here's the same macro in the Access 2010 macro builder. As you can see, the macro builder has been completely redesigned. The old grid format is gone, as is the action arguments pane. The conditional statements are shown as traditional if statements. Arguments for each action are shown in line instead of in a separate pane at the bottom of the screen. To add an action to a macro, I can either select it from the Add New Action drop-down list, or I can find it in the Action Catalog and then double-click or drag it to the macro pane. Then I fill in the arguments. To find actions more quickly, I can type some text in the search box and Access filters the list to show any actions that match the criteria. To remove the filter, I click the Cancel button next to the search box. I can even view other macros that I have already created in my database and reuse them inside this macro. I just expand the In This Database node in the Action Catalog and then drag a macro into the one I'm working on. To move an action, I just drag it up or down in the macro pane, or I can click the up or down arrows to move it one position at a time. To delete an action, I click the Delete button. In Access 2010, I can create if statements that include else and else if blocks, much as I would in VBA code. To add these blocks, I just select the if block and then click the type of block I want. To add a block that checks another condition, I click Add Else If and then enter a conditional expression. Notice how Access helps me enter identifiers, functions, and other database elements. I just type the first few characters, and once I see the item I want, I can double-click it to add it to the expression, or I can just use the arrow keys to highlight it and then press the Tab or Enter key to accept it. Of course, I'd normally add more actions to this block, but for the purposes of this demo, I'll just add a comment for now. I do that by double-clicking Comment in the Action Catalog pane. I'll extend this if statement by adding an else block that executes if none of the preceding conditions is true. I click in the else if block, and then I click Add Else. I'll add a similar comment to this block by double-clicking Comment in the Action Catalog while the Else block is selected. Once I've added a few actions, I can collapse them to make the macro more readable. I click Collapse Actions for a more compact display of the macro. Or I can click Collapse All to hide the actions and only show action blocks. I'll click Expand All to return to the default view. Thanks for watching this demo of the Access 2010 Macro Builder.